second drum set of the year. Whoa, look at that finish. First of all, this is a lacquer finish, not a wrap. Plus this super beefy throw off, I like what I'm seeing. Okay, a premiere, what's the big deal? Premiere is a UK drum brand, so you don't see too many in the US. But a couple years back, they partnered with Music Limited to be their exclusive US distributor. So good news if you live in the US and want a premiere. Premier is a brand I've never really been into, not because I don't like them, it's just that I don't really ever see any kits for sale around me. Me pulling this snare out of the box was the first time I've ever touched a Premier drum. I've never played one, and maybe once or twice in my life have I ever seen one in person. When I hear Premier drums, Keith Moon comes to mind, and that's about it. So because of that, along with a bunch of people saying that I've never owned a Premier and that I should get one, I've been on the hunt for a vintage kit to make a video about but plot twist out of nowhere premiere hit me up and asked if they could send me this kit in celebration of their 100 year anniversary so let's see what i've been missing out on the past century Ugh. this is like the heaviest spare parts box i've ever seen i have no idea what's inside of here we can see that the toms are rim mounted and we also get tom arms so many brand new kits I've gotten in the past don't include the Tom arm, so this is really nice to see. Then all of this just seems like the bass drum part, so we'll come back to this later. We got the first floor Tom. This one's 14 by 14. I think these are the heads, or maybe the hoops. Yep, all the heads. This is the hoop. Oh man, I was hoping there'd be like some red inlay on this or something. But still, this thing is super smooth. We got a 10 inch, 10 by 7 to be exact. Do a little more archaeology. And we got a 12 inch, which is 12 by 8. We got the final two drums. This is the second floor time. This one's 16 by 16. And then the bass drum, which is 22 by 18. Not my favorite depth. I do prefer a more shallow bass drum. So this kit is a Janista 100 SE. The shells are 100% birch and the Toms have Premier's classic 6mm undersized shell diameter. Now for comparison's sake, I have the Premier 10 inch and then this Pearl 10 inch. This shell measures about 9 and 7 eighths of an inch and the Premier is just about 9 and 11 sixteenths. Yes, I just measured a British drum using inches. Now this shell does have a wrap on it, but you can see that the head has like no play on it. Compare that to the Premier and you can see that it is a bit smaller. And the idea behind the smaller shells is it allows for a better head to bearing edge interaction. And another cool kind of nerdy thing about this kit, these lugs are retooled off the original 1992 UK factory drawings. So with the lugs, the undersized shells, and the tri-band finish, you have a modern kit with very vintage vibes. And all those features I just mentioned come on the entire Janista family, not just this centenary edition. So even these sparkly drum sets are a lacquer finish and not wraps. Which, by the way, it's been a long time since I've had a kit with a lacquer finish on it. And I know in the past I said that red is my least favorite color, but when done tastefully like this, I can get down with it. I love how you can still see the wood grain. Also, you want to talk about a badge? This thing is a quarter inch thick. Everything on this kit is super beefy, which I should have expected. When I bought my North drum set, I pointed out how huge those wing nuts were on the Tom mounts, but a lot of you pointed out that those were actually old Premier mounts. These mounts aren't as crazy, and one thing I really do like is how the memory lock is part of the design of the mount and not just an afterthought. See how the memory lock completes the oval of the mount? And another word I guess that comes to mind with all this hardware is bubbly. The lugs are round, the floor tom leg mounts, and tom mounts are all ovular. The floor tom leg feet are round, and even the rim mounts for the toms are like a half circle. And even after just handling this kit and hardware for a really short amount of time, I can tell you this stuff is super solid, very well built, and again, super beefy. I couldn't even bend this thing if I wanted to. There are no rough edges on this kit or hardware. Everything is super smooth, very well made, and you can tell that a lot of detail was put into this kit. 
Even these little rubber isolation things on the tom mount are built very precisely. Back to this snare strainer though, this thing is a unit. I also thought that the screw on the butt plate was for extra adjustability until this happened. What the heck? Did I break this thing? Oh crap. <laughs> it turns out that this is meant to come off if you loosen this screw. This whole piece comes off so you don't need to take the wires off when changing the snare side head. I feel like every snare should have this feature because setting up the snare wires is always the most finicky part of setting up a snare. I do like these cloth straps, but I see one problem. We gotta cut an angle on them for 10 extra style points. Sorry, Premiere. Or rather, sorry, er. I almost forgot about this bag. These look like all of the Floor Tom tension rods. There's also a bag of black plastic tension rods. Hopefully they included an extra because I dropped one into the abyss trying to film this. Well, that's gone forever. We got all of the floor time leg memory locks, then all of the bass drum claws, all of the bass drum tension rods. I also see some other things in here. Looks like a lug insert along with a swivel nut. And of course you can't forget the key. And finally, an extra bass drum lug and tom lug. I've never had a kit that comes with extra lugs, so that's pretty cool. But I mean, look how clean the casting is inside of these lugs. I'm honestly really blown away at the attention to detail on this kit. Even these lug gaskets look... Oh, hey. <laughs> I found the other washer. Even the lug gasket, look how perfect this is. I just talked a lot about the good, now let's talk about the bad. I noticed with the bass drum head, once there was some tension on the hoop, that the drum key was really tight inside of the claw. I checked some other keys and most of them were still tight, but some wouldn't even go on. That's what happens when you chase perfection, sometimes tolerances need to be loose. To my eyes, these claws look really dinky, especially since the lugs are larger and the bass drum being an 18 inch depth doesn't help either. I'm not talking about their strength, I'm talking about how they look, so not really a bad thing, but to my eyes they do look kind of weird. Then the only other bad thing I could see is that it didn't come with a hoop protector. I don't understand why every new drum set doesn't come with one, so I went ahead and cut one out of this red sparkle wrap to make my own. As you can see, there isn't too much bad stuff to talk about, but when everything is good, you kinda gotta nitpick. But at the same time, all of that good stuff doesn't matter unless it sounds good. I think it's safe to say that I've been sleeping on Premier Drums, and willing to bet you have too. 